Give me a paper, Pierre. Yes, All sir. Right. Everybody wants to read about the strange disappearance of the popular musical comedy star. Pierre, bring me a paper and hurry. I'm too busy. You'll have to come down and get it yourself, monsieur. Look at this. It's almost unbelievable, the way she has vanished into thin air. Every man knows what sort of a woman she is. I'll wager she's gone off with one of her sweethearts. <laughs> Your police department is thoroughly incompetent, Monsieur, and I'm holding you as prefect of police personally responsible. Either you find Marie Roger within the next 24 hours, or I'll see to it that you're relieved of your commission. Do you understand? Monsieur, we are doing everything possible. Oh. Believe me, I haven't slept for the past 10 days. I have every gendarme in the city on the case. Now, what more can I do? You wanted to see me? Yes. Uh, for, uh, this is Dr. Dupin, our chief medical officer. Dr. Dupin? Monsieur. Uh, Dupin, this is Monsieur Beauvais, uh, the Minister of Naval Affairs. He's a very close friend of the Roger family. Dupin, you had something to do with those murders in the Rue Morgue, didn't you? Oh, something to do, monsieur. Dr. Dupin practically solved those murders single-handed. Yes? And why haven't you done something about this Marie Roger case? I'm sure we'll find her, monsieur. What makes you so positive? There are very few cases our police fail to solve. Well, this is one case your famous department had better solve, and quickly. Or you and your friend will be out of a job. Monsieur Gobelin. Didn't I tell you I didn't want to be disturbed? Yes, <clears throat> but I thought you wanted to know. A report just came in. A woman's body has been found in the river, believed to be Marie Roger. The body's at the wharf below the second bridge. Good, good. Marie Roger, you see, we found her. I told you we would. Why are you so sure it's Marie Roger? Well, that's easily decided, monsieur. You yourself can identify her. Will you come with us now? Right away? Well, why not right away? I'll come along. Circulate, circulate! Face. Steady, monsieur. Can you identify the body? I, I don't know. It's about the same size as Marie Roger, the same shaped head and color hair. Does it look familiar, monsieur? Yes. Yes, it must be she. But it has no face. Who could have done it, Dupin? It's the work of a fiend. Or a beast. Looks as if the face had been torn to a pulp by the claws of an animal. Incredible. Granny, if we'd only hear something, anything definite, even that... My child, the police are doing everything possible to find your sister. But surely in ten days they could know... Oh, Monsieur Beauvais, you found Marie? Now, Camille, my child, you must be brave. Speak up. Where is she? This is Monsieur Goblin, prefet of police. Madame Roger, Mademoiselle Camille Roger. Come, come, what have you found? Madame, it is my unfortunate duty to inform you that there is nothing more we can do for your granddaughter. We, we found her body in the river. It isn't true. Come here, my child, please. Marie! Hello. Oh, oh I knew it. I knew you weren't dead. Dead? How dreadful. The police found a body in the river which we thought was yours. Well, you are wrong. Marie, where in heaven's name have you been? Oh, Granny, what difference does it make? We've got her back. That's what counts. But she does owe us some sort of explanation. Yes, Mademoiselle, you've had the whole city in an uproar. Look at the paper. What an awful picture of me. Who is the little man? Mademoiselle, I have the honor to be the prefet of police. Mm, how nice. Marie, where have you been? Oh, Granny, you too? Mademoiselle, you don't understand. No? Yeah, well, I must make a full report to my department. We must explain to the public. Oh, you must. Well, I'll explain to you. It is nobody's business where I go or what I do. Camille, I have a lovely present for you. Come. But, mademoiselle, you can't evade... I'm very sorry, monsieur, to have caused the police so much trouble, but I'm afraid you'll have to consider the case closed. Closed? But why? You heard him. There is no more need for the police, monsieur. Well, what's that? A leopard. What's the matter with you? 
Haven't you ever seen a leopard before? It's perfectly harmless, I assure you. Yes, of course. Come in. Well, what is it now? I didn't mean to bother you, Monsieur Le Prefet, but this report on the Marie Roger case... File it away and forget it. Forget it? Don't you understand in order to do as I tell you? Forget it. Oui, Monsieur Le Prefet. Monsieur? What'd you find? Nothing yet. You mean there wasn't a single mark of identification on that body? No, the one who did it did a very thorough job. <laughs> It's the most curious case I was ever mixed up in. A woman without a face. We'll find means of identification. I haven't given up yet. You know, I've got a hunch. I've got a hunch that there's a definite connection between that body and the Roger case. What are you driving at? Well, now, maybe it's too fantastic to mention. But you yourself said that the claws of an animal could have done it. Yes, I said could have. I didn't say did. What's on your mind? The old lady. Old Madame Roger. Now, there's a queer customer. She's eccentric. She's a little bit twisted, I think. She's got scads of money, and yet she lives in an old-fashioned house in the Latin Quarter. And listen to this. She's got a pet cat, only it's a leopard. A leopard? A full-grown leopard. That's very interesting, Goldblatt, but it's a blind alley. Well, now, I'm not so sure. You can forget it. I can forget it. Well, now, wait. I can forget it. Just forget it. It's all settled, then? And I want Marie to be the first to know. Oh, I was thinking it would be a lot more exciting if we eloped and didn't tell anyone. Sort of surprise them all. Well, but I'd have to tell Marie, Marcel. I, I've never had any secrets from her. Well, does she tell you everything? Do you know where she's been for the past ten days? No, but it's the first time she hasn't. For that matter, you haven't told me where you've been yourself for nearly two weeks. Well, that's the way it is with the Ministry of Naval Affairs. They can send me anywhere in a moment's notice. You're gonna have to get used to that. It's nearly 8 o'clock. I'll be late. Marcel. Marie. I have no idea you were here. Marie, we have something to tell you. Yes? Yes, Marie. Congratulate us. We're gonna be married. Married? You too? Yes, you're not really surprised, are you? Of course not. I wish you all the happiness in the world. Oh, I'll be late. Camille, I forgot my purse. Will you be an angel and get it for me? Of course I will. Excuse her, Marcel. Thank you, my dear. Now, take it easy, Marie. Don't let your temper spoil all our plans. Our plans did not include your marrying, Camille. I don't intend to marry her. Then why did you propose to her? Be quiet. Somebody might overhear you. I don't care if they do. As a matter of fact, I am going to tell them everything. You hear me? Everything. You are not going to change my mind. Don't be a fool, Marie. A fool is what I am not going to be. I won't let you marry her. I'll tell them everything. That you promised to marry me. Are you going to let petty jealousy upset all our plans? Our plans did not include your marrying, Camille. I won't let you. I won't. I have no intention of marrying her. Then why did you propose to her? It should be very obvious to you. It's only to cover us. Who could possibly suspect me, her fiancé, when she disappears tomorrow night? Can't you see? Marcel, darling, you are so clever. And I am so stupid. You do love me, don't you? Nothing can ever change that, if you'll just believe in me. Then we'll go through with our plans at the party. One Camille is gone. We have everything. Of course. Hello, Gobert. Hello. Any luck? Yes, I've just completed my examination. And? I find the body to be that of a perfectly normal young girl. She's English and hasn't been in this country for more than 24 hours. Well, now, just a minute. She's English. How could you possibly know all that? It's a very simple thing for a chemist. You see, the Chinese subsist mainly on rice and vegetables. The English are known to be beef eaters, and so, you see, we are what we eat. Amazing. You say she's English? Yes. Ah, then we can trace her through Scotland Yard. Exactly. Good work. Now that just shows how wrong I can be. I was so sure there was a connection between that body and the Roger affair. Well, I'm not so sure that there isn't. As a matter of fact, I'm still working on that angle. 
Yeah, but that case is officially closed. Well, what's to prevent us working on it unofficially? Well, nothing, I suppose, but to what purpose? There's just one thing. I'd like to meet this Marie Roger. Oh, well, I don't know. Come to think of it, Deloup, the man who owns the show that she's appearing in, is giving a party in her honor tonight. Maybe I can arrange it. Oh, good. Doctor, this message just came to you. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. Sure, sir. Go back. Listen to this. My dear Dr. Dupin, it is imperative that you see me immediately. Do not waste time, as it is a matter of utmost importance. You will come alone and at once. Signed, Madame Cecile Roger. The old lady, huh? That's just like her. She commands, she doesn't ask. Exactly what is her relationship to Marie? The grandmother. Hmm. From what you've told me about her, it's going to be very interesting to meet her. You coming? Yeah, well, uh, it says alone. I guess you better... You're not afraid of that little pet, are you? Yeah, who's a... certainly not? I'm not afraid of the little pet. I'm very fond of animals, actually. But it's not such a little... I made it very clear, Dr. Dupin, that I wanted to see you alone. I'm very sorry, Madame Roger, but Monsieur Gobla is my most trusted friend. Trusted friend, my foot. There is no such animal. That's just what I wanted to avoid, police meddling. Well, I'm sorry, Madame, you must excuse us. Oh, oh, oh wait a moment. Uh, please sit down. There is something I want you to do. Well, why don't you sit down? And it's worth 50,000 francs. Well, that's quite a sum of money, madame. You keep yeah. out of this, do you hear? I don't believe I'd be interested in that sort of money, madame. <laughs> Nonsense. That's all everybody's interested in. Money. I'll give you 50,000 francs to escort my granddaughter Camille to Madame de Luc's party tonight. May I ask why you use this curious way of having Mademoiselle Camille escorted to a party? I happen to know that she is going to be murdered tonight. And I want you to prevent it. Madame, do you know what you're saying? Of course I know, you fool. And I don't want any police notoriety about it. Do you hear? Uh, why did you select me, madame? For your work on the murders of the Rue Morgue. My memory is even sharper than my ears. Your ears? Then you've heard something. That's none of your business. I am speaking to Dr. Dupin as a private individual and not as a member of your fine police department. How do you know Camille is to be murdered tonight? Again, let me remind you that this is no concern of yours. In that case, madame, I'm afraid I can't do as you ask. You are not fooling me. You want to know why she is to be murdered? She comes into her grandfather's fortune tomorrow. It's better than a million and a half francs. Now, do you see? Who benefits by her death? Don't ask me fool questions. If Camille were to be murdered at the Deluxe party tonight, I can't imagine you even allowing her to go. I don't believe a word of it. Who cares what you believe? That's why you are nothing more than a gendarme. Madame, I have the honor to be the préfet of police. Go have yourself stuffed. Dr. Dupin, perhaps you know why Camille must attend the party. As I see it, there's no telling when another attempt may be made on Mademoiselle Camille's life, and tonight would be the logical time to catch anyone who tries it. I knew you were clever. I trust you don't allow your little pet to roam the streets at night, madame. Certainly not. She's never out of my sight. No, but those claws are dangerous, aren't they? What are you talking about? Oh, nothing. Shall we be going? You don't wish to earn 50,000 francs? I have arranged that Marcel Vignot, Camille's fiancé, will be detained in the Ministry of Naval Affairs. I have influence in that department. You will escort her, won't you? Your offer intrigues me, madame, but I'm afraid... Oh. oh, I'm sorry, Granny. I didn't know you had guests. Come in, my child. 
This is my granddaughter, Camille. My dear, this is Dr. Paul Dupin. Dr. Dupin. You know this gentleman? Of course, Monsieur Gobelin. You were saying, Monsieur? I was saying, Madame, that it would be indeed a pleasure. Making me the talk of all my friends. Giving a party for that notorious creature. Bringing her into my own home. But it's business. My new show's a great hit, thanks to her. She's sensational. Every man in Paris is interested in her. That's just what I'm afraid of. Oh, now, my dear, now, please don't. Marie. Oh, it's you. Why do you always dismiss me like this? After all, I am Marcel's superior officer. I could send him to Indochina for a year. You wouldn't. <laughs> it's nothing to me. It's Camille he's going to marry. They can have a honeymoon in China for all of me. Whom do you think you're fooling? Listen, Marie, you know you once gave me to understand... Oh, you take everything so seriously. And you, you never do. I could make you very happy. I could give you everything. Won't you reconsider? <laughs> Henri, you are a dear and I love you. But let's go in before you overwhelm me. <laughs> Camille, what kept you? Oh, Dr. Dupin, I want you to meet Mademoiselle Marie Roger and Monsieur Beauvais, our Minister of Naval Affairs. We've already met. And Monsieur Gobelin. How did you do, Monsieur? Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Sorry I'm late, Camille. That's quite all right. Have you met the famous Dr. Dupin? Pleasure, monsieur. I've heard a great deal about you and the murders of the Rue Morgue. Thank you, monsieur Vignon. Should we dance? Pardon me, do you mind? Not at all. May I? Thank you. Thank you. What are the police doing here? I wish I knew. We can't go on with our plans for them here. It's too dangerous. We never get a better chance than this. We'll go through with our plans in spite of them. Very well. Would you like some refreshments, darling? Yes, I would. Will you excuse us? What about you, mademoiselle? No, thank you. Let's go to the terrace, eh? Would you care for some wine, mademoiselle? Why, yes. Thank you. You know, there's something very mysterious about you, very becoming, too. Every woman is mysterious until the man marries her. It isn't every woman who creates a sensation when she disappears and returns mysteriously as you did. Is that an official inquiry, monsieur? Oh, no, I didn't mean it that way. Please, I don't wish to discuss it any further. Shall we drink to a mutual understanding and a lasting friendship? Fante. Here she is, Marie. The ox is ready. You promised us one of your new songs. Of course. Talk to me. Well, Dupin, now that you've met her, what do you think? <laughs> to tell you the truth, I haven't had a chance to classify her yet. Mm. By the way, my friend, I wouldn't take a fancy to Camille. You know, she's engaged to Marcel. My interest in Camille is purely professional. Oh, yes, yes. I was there when it happened. <laughs> Have you seen Camille in the last ten minutes? Well, she's right in here, I think. There she is. I told you nothing had happened to her. That old lady was talking a lot of nonsense. You know, she ought to be in an asylum where she belongs. I mean it. Mama, dites-moi ce qu'on sent quand on aime et ce plaisir à ce tourment. Je suis tout le jour dans une peine extrême 
Et la nuit je ne sais comment Quel mal peut nous causer un amant Si quelqu'un près de nous soupire Que va-t-il lui dire Un berger bien fait plus beau que l'amour Va d'un air discret me jurer l'autre jour qu'il m'aimait bien. Je ne dis rien, je ne dis rien. Mais s'il revient encore, mon Dieu, que fait à ma maman? Que fait à la maman? Un berger vient plus beau que l'amour va donner discret me jurer l'autre jour qu'il m'aimait bien je ne dis rien oh, je ne dis rien mais s'il revient encore mon dieu que fait à l'autre maman que fait with Dupin around. Your grandmother's responsible for his being here. Camille told me that he's some sort of bodyguard. Somehow the old lady got wind of it, I know. Impossible, she couldn't have found out. Then why is Dupin here and the prefect of police? You're just trying to make a mountain out of a molehill to suit your own purpose. Why don't you say you don't want to go through with it? Oh, don't be silly. It would only take a few minutes after you get her out here. The river is so near. It looked like an accident. Yes. Maybe the police being here is just what we need. We'll do it under their very noses. You know, Marie, sometimes you're very clever. I'll wait here. You get here. Good. It's nearly midnight. Don't you think we'd better see Camille home? Just like to finish this cigar. Would you care for one? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. <coughs> he came from the garden over there. that it came from somewhere around here. What's this? Huh? Uh-huh. Marie Roger. Oh, I thought I heard a scream. You did? And where were you, monsieur? Why, I was taking a walk in the garden. With Mademoiselle Marie Roger? No. No, I was alone. What happened? We don't know yet. Can I be of any assistance? I don't think so. Thank you, monsieur. Thank you. I'm going in the house to see if I can find Marie. All right. Someone, Monsieur Goblin. Oh, Mademoiselle Marie Roger. Have you seen her? She went out into the garden the last I saw her. Oh? Well, who was with her? I didn't notice, really. Why? Oh, doesn't make any difference, I find her. Thank you. She's a very elusive sort of person, the men tell me. Uh -huh. 
I... Well, what have you got there? Hmm. You found Marie? No, she's nowhere about. Well, who would you say this handkerchief belonged to? Well, it's hard to say for sure. Ah, uh, what are you up to, Dupin? You know that perfume can be easily recognized. It must be Camille's. Well, if it is, it's undoubtedly a plant. I'm sure of that. Now, look here. I may be a bit thick, but this time I'm not taken in. If, as I suspect, a crime has been committed, that can be very important. Now, see that your interest in Camille remains professional. And don't let me think that you're trying to, to shield her. Shield her from what? Well, from... I wish I knew what you were thinking. No, oh, I was thinking that we're in for a great deal of trouble. Well, do... Any late news in the Roger case? Plenty. These papers just came. Oh, give me one. Mm. What is regarded as the greatest mystery of the decade, Marie Roger disappeared for the second time. What do you suppose she's up to? That, my dear, is what the police would like to know. It's no use, monsieur. I don't think we'll locate the body. Will you let me be the judge of that? Keep on firing. They've been firing that infernal cannon all day long. Who are they? It's that Lieutenant Goebel and his men. They're working on the theory that Marie was drowned. And they're trying to bring the body to the surface. Do you think they'll succeed? No, they won't. Marie will turn up again. She's a smart girl. I wouldn't be too sure about that. What do you mean? I have a feeling they'll find her body. And when they do, they'll continue to embarrass us. Madame Roger and... Everybody connected with the case. Well, you ought to be able to do something about that. Our department's in charge of harbors and rivers. All right, Dupin, what is it? You're wasting your time, Goblin. Firing that cannon won't do any good. If the body's caught in the riverbed, it's a million to one chance that only the vibrations of sound will raise it. Well, I'm not overlooking even that slim chance. The specific gravity of Marie Roger's body was such that it must have gone down immediately. Oh, specific gravity. It's a well-known fact that drowned people come up at least twice. Science disproves that. If the specific gravity of an object is greater than that of water, it'll go down only once. The body of a slender woman will do exactly that. Have you any reason to doubt that the body's in the river? You should have consulted the charts of the riverbed. The body is still in the river below Deluxe Garden. A diver can bring it up. Now, will you do as I say? Order the men back to headquarters. There's the signal. The diver wants to come up. Heavens, Dupin, this one hasn't any face either. Monsieur le Prefect, I have the honor to present the compliments of Monsieur Beauvais, Minister for Naval Affairs. I'm to take charge of this body. But I haven't finished my examination. I have my orders.
was very interested to receive your report of Madame Roger's gift. Yes, a beautiful animal. Monsieur Fauté brought it this morning. There she is. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've met before. And that's just as I thought. It's very important that we get some of the scrapings from that animal's claws. Of course. We'll go right in. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, just a moment. I don't think that'll be necessary. If you'll uh, just put them in that envelope, will you? We. Oui. Isn't it a beautiful day, Dupin? For what? Oh, for love. Uh, take Camille, for instance. Oh, stop it, Gobelin. Tell me, what makes you so chipper? My friend, I am about to put the finishing touches to the most fantastic crime of the century, the mystery of Marie Roger. Well, that's great. Now, these crusts you asked me to analyze, they're definitely... Now, uh, wait a minute. Let me tell you this time. Human blood, huh? How did you know? My dear chap, that is the solution of the crime. Oh, that's very interesting. You don't believe me, huh? Well, listen to this. The curator of the zoo received a gift this morning from Madame Roger, a leopard. Oh, that's good. Don't you see? She has no more use for the beast. She used it to kill Marie. Now, by her own admission, she was afraid that Marie was going to kill Camille for the money. The mutilated body? You yourself said that it was the work of an animal. I merely said it could have been. However, in this case, I'm sure that it was work of a human animal. A human animal? Are you sure? Quite. Oh, this is a wretched day. Oh, by the way, my friend, Beauvais is furious. Someone broke into the morgue last night and stole the brain from Marie's body. Now, you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Well, we had to have it. Oh, Dupin, this is infamous. Oh, come, come now. You were on your way to arrest Madame Roger. Don't let me distract you. Do you mind if I come with you? Well, I don't want to. But if it was a human animal... Come along, then. Oh, do can me. I had the whole thing... Stop here. Here we are. But this isn't Madame Roger's. This is Madame Deluc's place. Yes, I know, I know. Yes, but... But we've been over these grounds with a fine tooth comb. What can you possibly hope to find here? Have patience, Goblin. Patience. Oh. Where are the police, monsieur? I'd like a little information. Oui, monsieur. Whereabouts do you keep your gardening tools, your cultivator and spade and such? In the shed, over there. I will show you. Well, don't bother. I'll find them myself. Oui, monsieur. Would you tell really what? It's only a hand cultivator. Exhibit A, Goblin. We'll analyze the dirt on it in the lab, and I guarantee we'll find human blood. You don't mean that that was... Exactly. Come on. Where are we going? To Madame Roger's. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Are we? Well... Just a minute, Goblin. Which was Marie's room? That one there in the corner. She shared it with Camille. What difference does that make? It may make a great deal of difference. Oh, now, really? Yeah, I'm a man of infinite patience. But I tell you, Dupin, I will not put up with your mysterious airs any longer. Oh, I'm sorry, Goblin, but I'm almost convinced I know who killed Marie. Well, then why can't we make the arrest? We can't make an arrest without an ironclad case. We mustn't leave a single avenue of escape open. Give a criminal enough rope and you know the rest. It's you again. Well, what do you want? Madame, we have... We were concerned about your arm, madame. How did you know? I presumed as much when I learned you'd given up your pet. May I see it? The beast turned on me without warning. They always revert to type. Ari, make out a bank draft for 50,000 francs for Dr. Dupin. I think if you ask me... Who asked you to think? Do as you are told. It's nothing very serious.
In payment for your services, Doctor. I don't believe I've earned this yet, madame. Hmm, don't tell me you've any scruples about taking the money. No, it's not that. I always like to give full value. You know, of course, that your granddaughter, Marie, was murdered. Murdered? What the devil's he talking about? I thought you'd try something like this. That's why I had the body removed from your jurisdiction, to prevent another cruel mistake. Now take your money and go before I lose my temper. Irie, mind your manners. Dr. Dupin is my guest. How do you know it's Marie? Your grandmother can tell you that. You are cheeky rascal, Dr. Dupin. What are you after? More money? You know very well I'm only interested in learning who killed your granddaughter. How do you propose to prove Marie's identity? By surgery. With your permission, I'd like to remodel the face. I won't permit it. Let it be Marie. If she is dead, we can't restore her to life. Granny, what are you saying? I know what I am saying. I won't stand for any more of this cheap sensationalism. Let it be done with, do you hear? You can't hush up murder. Do you dare to accuse me? No one's madame. accusing you, Madame Roger. If you will, we can end all this unpleasantness. With your permission, I'd like to search Marie's room. What for? A diary. For Marie's diary, I'm sure we can learn all we wish to know from it. Marie didn't keep a diary that I know of. Besides, I won't permit you to ransack my house. We can always get a search warrant, madame. Why, you... I think on second thoughts, we don't need to search. What? You heard what Madame Roger said. She's perfectly within her legal rights. I think we should be going now. Good day. But look here, you Come can... along. Good day, madame. That Dupin is a troublemaker. He seems to think that one of us killed Marie. Perhaps one of us did. Granny! Dupin, I don't understand. Well, first you blow hot and then you blow cold. You're the most exasperating fellow I have. Now, take that diary, for instance. That was an absolute stroke of genius. Every young girl has a diary nowadays. They put their secret thoughts in. Why did you let the old lady bluff you out of it? Oh, quiet, Goma. Here. Where are we going now? Come with me. Dupin, will you please let me in on this? Just be patient and follow me. Break your neck. You don't object to a little second story work, do you? Well, not if it has any reason. But that's Marie's room, isn't it? Well, yes, that's. Oh, I see. We're going to beat them to the diary, eh? Oh, well, that's different. Let's get the diary. There's no hurry. It won't run away. Oh, now, Dupin, this is no time for joking. I was never more serious. Dupin, I have an idea. Good. It's about time, isn't it? Oh, no, no, wait. Wait, I'm serious. We'll set a trap. Because, don't you see, the one who killed Marie will want the diary to destroy it. And that means that the first one through that door will be our man. My dear Goblin, you're a genius. Oh, no, it, it's clever, but it isn't. It's somebody's coming. Let's fit that shoe to the proper foot, Monsieur. It is I who should be asking you that question. You know what I'm after. The diary. You, you admit it? Certainly. You admit... <clears throat> now I've got you. You know there is a law against the legal entry. Madame Roger, you wouldn't have us thrown in jail for such a trifling matter. Not you, Dr. Dupin. But this prepared friend of yours, he tempts me. Madame. We were trying to, to trap the one who killed Marie, and we found Monsieur Beauvais searching for the diary. What of it? Madame Roger asked me to. You, you did? Of course. Why? Well, I... <laughs> I'm afraid there's been a little misunderstanding, Monsieur. My, my apologies. <laughs> now get out, and don't bother us anymore. 
In just a minute, before you go, there's a little detail I'd like to clear up. This handkerchief. Mademoiselle Camille, this is yours, I believe. Why, yes, it is. Where did you find it? It was left by the person who murdered your sister. No. You don't mean intimate that Camille... What's that? Camille could have known what her sister intended to do. I don't know what you're talking about. Granny, what are they saying about Marie? Should I be the one to tell her? I'll do it. I tried to spare you the pain, my dear, but sooner or later you would know about it. You loved Marie, and she, well, she hated you. I don't believe it. Listen, you were your grandfather's favorite. Today you came into the bulk of his estate. Marie never forgave you for that. Secretly, she planned to kill you. Kill me? And I engaged Dr. Dupin to guard you against her. Something went wrong, and she met the fate that was intended for you. I don't know who did it, and I don't care. She is dead, and I'm glad. You never really knew your stepsister or what she was capable of. She was so consumed with hate and jealousy, it twisted her mind. She even thought that I would enter into her diabolical scheme. You, monsieur? Something tells me, Dr. Dupin, that Marcel could tell us about that handkerchief, if he wished to. Monsieur Vignon? Yes, I... I must have left it there in the garden by mistake. Camille gave me her handkerchief to hold during our dance. I'd had it in my pocket. It must have dropped out when I... when I killed her. Marcel! You killed... I had to do it to save you, Camille. Monsieur, you don't expect us to believe this. You're just trying to shield Camille. I killed her, I tell you. She was fond of me, misunderstood, thought I'd do anything for money. You have no idea the type of mentality she had. I killed her because I couldn't let her go through with it. We understand that, boy. I did it, I have no regrets. Why did you disfigure the face? I don't remember doing that. No, you wouldn't. Then you disposed of the body by throwing it in the river. Yes, I, I guess so. I'm not sure. You understand, monsieur, the law must take its course. It's the usual procedure, isn't it? Then you must come with me under arrest. And I must warn you that anything you say may be held against you. I have nothing to hide. Are you certain of that? Well, I've told you everything. What more do you want? Very good, monsieur. That you did on July 11th at 11.45 p.m. put to death by means here and after set forth the said Mademoiselle Marie Roger. If the court pleases, monsieur le minister. There are extenuating circumstances. This case must not be tried. This court isn't trying the case. The charges have been recorded and the prisoner is being arraigned. The law requires this formality. I have no power beyond that. Will you please refrain from interrupting the proceedings? The prisoner has by now been advised by his counsel that if he wishes me to set trial, he must plead not guilty. That is the law. How do you plead? Not guilty. Go black. I want you to withdraw charges. Drop it. What? Do as I say. Don't ask any questions before it's too late. Oh, this is too much. You haven't very much time. You're going to do as I say or not? I certainly am not. Very well. Where are you going? What do you intend to do? See his lawyers. Testify on his behalf. Are you insane? Better make up your mind quickly, Gobler. Well, I can't... Yes, that will be all right. The court remands the prisoner uh, to the custody of... One moment, Your Honor. Yes, Monsieur Le Prefect. Uh, the state withdraws the charges and waives trial at this time. You have a reason for this strange procedure, Monsieur? Uh, but of course, Your Honor. What do I say? <clears throat> say anything. Say we need more time to prepare the case. Yeah, more time. Um, with the court's indulgence, um, the state is not prepared to press the charges. You realize you've been wasting the court's valuable time? In the future, we will not tolerate such practices. Case dismissed. Humiliating me in public, I hope you're satisfied. This is all you're doing, Dupin. I didn't want to see an innocent man go to the guillotine. You knew I was justified and that I'd be cleared, but for some reason you've got it in for me. My seconds will call on you, monsieur, and if it's the last thing I do, I'll kill you. Well, you brought it on yourself. Dueling is still illegal, and I could stop it, but as far as I'm concerned, let him kill you. He's confident, isn't he? That he'll kill you? No, that he could get off so easily. Well, what do you mean by that? You may drop me off at the Prefecture. I doubt very much whether we shall have occasion to work together again. You're beginning to mistrust me, Gobelin. Well, what do you expect? No one can tell which way the wind is going to blow with you. Marie disappears. A body is found. It's identified as Marie. Then she reappears but won't talk. I'm hired to protect Camille. Then Marie is murdered. 
Beauvais tries to hush it up. The old lady tries to dismiss it. We suspect Beauvais, the old lady, Marcel, and Camille. Yes, but now that we know Marcel's story, it all makes sense. Except for one thing. It's not justified homicide, as Marcel claims, but cold, calculated, premeditated murder. If you say premeditation, that puts the case in a new light. Oh, you're trying to confuse me. Well, on the contrary. Let's suppose Marcel goes to trial, claims he did it for Camille. What jury would convict him? Well, he'd be exonerated, but... But if it were premeditated, cold-blooded murder, and we were able to prove it afterwards, why, he'd laugh at us. It's a cardinal point of law that a man can't be tried twice for the same crime. Huh? Well, that's right. Same thing applies to Beauvais and Madame Roger. Ah, then you're not sure it was Marcel. Well, I was just supposing. Oh, Dupin, you be the death of me. Now, will you tell me what you expect to find here that we don't already know? Let's see, uh... We came here directly we heard the scream, didn't we? Yes, yes. Marcel returned to the dance. He would have had to pass us. The fact that he didn't proves that he'd arranged a way to get back without meeting anyone. Well, that's clear enough. But Beauvais was here. Beauvais could be our man. Now, wait. If Marcel had this preconceived plan to get back to the house, that would prove premeditation. Well, anyone can see that. He must be far more clever than we suspect. But how did he do it? You're Marie. I grab you. You scream. I rush over to the river and throw you in. Now I hear footsteps. That was us. Now I've got to get back to the house without being seen. What to do? Uh-huh. I rush over to the tool shed. The tool shed? Yes, now you stay here and count ten. Now, where, where, I, I'm in no mood to play games. Well, please do as I say. Well, you... Four, six, eight, eight. Dupin, you... Dupin, where the devil are you? Dupin! What have you done with Dr. Dupin? Dr. Dupin? Oh, the other gentleman. He was with you, monsieur. You just came from the river. You threw something in. I heard the splash. Oui, oui, monsieur. A rock. A big rock. I was... What have you done with Dr. Dupin? I have done nothing, monsieur. I've had my eye on you, and we'll soon find out if you're telling the truth. I'm placing you under arrest. If we find his body in the river, I'll... I'll crush you with my two hands. Oh, but monsieur... Now pay strict attention to me. You remember where we found the body of Marie Roger? Oui, monsieur, at Madame de Luc's estate. Exactly. Now, I want you to assign four men, take the diving equipment, and get down there immediately. In the dark? In the dark. Use oil lamps, use torches. Burn the house down if you have to. But you get down there and find the body of Dupin. Oh, so what's you... all the excitement? Don't stand there staring at me like numbskulls. Get out. Will you get out? The gardener, you still wish to question him? Release him. Get rid of him. I don't care what you do to him. Oui, monsieur. For what I could do to you, they could send me to the guillotine and I would be happy. Why? You've just been organizing a searching party to look for my body, haven't you? You and this Roger case have me going around in circles. Where have you been? Tasting wine. Tasting wine. Yes, and I brought you a present. A bottle of Napoleon. The finest brandy in the deluxe cellar. Do you understand that the... the 25-year-old Napoleon... Do you realize there isn't a finer liquor in the world than this? The deluxe cellar. You're like a bloodhound, Goblin. There's no shaking you off the scent, is there? Will you tell me just what you were doing in the deluxe wine cellar? If you'd taken the trouble to investigate, you would have found a trap door which led into an underground cellar, which in turn led into the house. Well, you might have saved me the anxiety. Well, I thought you didn't care what happened to me, so I decided to test you. T to plague me, you mean? Well, at least you found out how that Marcel slipped by us. If it was Marcel. Oh, now, enough of that. I'm convinced. I'm going to send him to trial and charge him with premeditated murder. And have him blow your case sky high? It's only our testimony against his, with everything on his side. Well, we'll have to take that chance. No, we won't, because I won't let you. We have no alternative. But we have. 
Can I give you my word? If you don't tell me exactly what's on your mind, I'll, I'll not be responsible. Very well. I'll tell you this much. I went to see Madame Roger. Marcel, Beauvais, and Camille were there. Yes? I set a trap. A trap? What kind of a trap? I can't explain now. I have some very important work to do. Here they come now. Dr. Dupin's orders are to follow them. The driver knows what to do. Is that Dupin? I wonder what the devil he's up to now. You wouldn't know, Marcel? Frankly, no. I have nothing to hide. We won't argue the point. Tell the driver to go faster. We must lose them. Faster, driver. You caught on. They're making a dash for it. You mustn't let them get away. Faster. that Dupin, whatever he's up to, don't you think? Yes. Good night. See you at the ministry in the morning. Good night. Good night. All right, driver. Here you Interrupt me now, Goldberg. Can't you see I'm busy? Oh, but you'll want to see this. Oh, just as I thought. Oh, now, that experiment can wait until later. It's completed now, and you'll be happy to hear that... Will you please listen to me a moment? I've just had word from Scotland Yard. They traced that first body, and, and it... it's the wife of Marcel Vigneault. Well, now, how did you know that? I always felt there was a connection between both crimes, like the links in a chain. He married her several years ago in London and then abandoned her. She came out here and threatened to upset his plan, so he killed her. Mutilated her face, hoping to hide her identity. Why don't you tell me these things? Because you have a habit of walking in where angels fear to tread. You'd have promptly arrested Marcel and then spoil all the fun. Now, really, Dupin, there's nothing comical about murder. You're right, Gobelin, you're right. But we don't know for certain that it was Marcel who also killed Marie. Might have been Beauvais or the old lady or even Camille. We'll know for certain tonight. Why tonight? Dr. Dupin, they got away. Who got away? Monsieur Beauvais and Monsieur Vigneault. What's all this about? Don't waste time asking questions. Come on. Come on where? What? Madame Roger's house. It's a matter of life and death. But why? Wait a minute, Dupin. Explain something. Matter of life and death, did you say? Yes, and I could kick myself for exposing Camille to such danger. Camille? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just along for the ride. I'm sorry, Gobert. I meant to tell you, but after I left you into Luke's garden, I went to Madame Roger's. Beauvais and Marcel were there. I accused Camille of having Marie's diary and of knowing its contents. I gave her till morning to give it up or face arrest as the murderer's accomplice. Oh, oh, then my men were supposed to trail Beauvais and Marcel to see which one would go back for the diary? Exactly. The worst of it is, though, there was no diary. Huh? You're sure you have the diary? For the last time, Granny, I tell you, I didn't even know Marie kept a diary. That Dupin's a clever rascal. Good night, my dear. Good night, Granny. You see, Gobelin, Marie had the mind of a criminal. Marie Roger was a criminal? I could hardly believe it myself, but I suspected something of that sort, so I called in Professor Bartour of the Medical Institute. Tonight, I double-checked his analysis, and there can be no doubt about his findings. Marie Roger had the twisted mentality of a confirmed criminal. But what does that do with the diary? Don't you see? A criminal doesn't keep a diary. In the hands of the police, it would be very embarrassing. Oh. 
Oh, of course, I see your plan now. The one who killed Marie doesn't know there was no diary, and he'll go back to try to get it from Camille. Exactly, and if we're late, I'll never forgive myself. Hmm. Flying now. Vino. How's that? Comfortable? Quite, thank you. Now, don't you think you should get some rest? Oh, I'm all right now. From now on, you'd better do as doctor says. Mm. You know, what puzzles me is, when did you first know it was Marcel? The night of the Deluxe party when he tried to poison you and Dr. Dupin. Poisonous? Yes, Monsieur Beauvais saw Marcel put something in the wine glasses and he removed them and later brought them to me for analysis. The rest you know. Why didn't you tell me this? Because, my friend, you didn't trust me and Monsieur Beauvais did. Oh, why, my dear <laughs> Goblin, nevertheless, you are to be highly commended on the intelligent manner in which you handled this case. Oh, Monsieur le Minister. <laughs> what did he do? Madame, you forget that I have the honor oh, to... Oh, do sit down. 